Well, let's consider the graphs of sinusoidal functions, and we're going to specifically be looking at, um, I think we're just looking at sine and cosine functions here for the next little bit. Let me glance through here and make sure that's true. Yeah. And uh, we're also going to be focusing on transformations. Now, here in this first example that we're looking at, we got f of x equals the cosine of x. And this is the graph that we see here in blue. And I guess we start off by thinking, if I'm looking at the cosine of x, I'm assuming that I've got 1 right here, 1 times the cosine of x. Because this coefficient, as we see in this 1 third cosine of x, affects our amplitude. Now, what is the amplitude? And I guess there's two ways to consider this. One is the distance between the maximum amount, maximum value, to the x-axis or the midline. In this case, the x-axis is the midline. That would be one way to look at it. Another way to look at it is we take the peak, let's say, and the trough come down here right here and we divide that by two and so in a cosine function we're uh, in its uh, parent form we're fluctuating i've got a high of one and we've got a, a low of negative one and we're taking the absolute value of that difference and dividing it by two but we could really tell it from the coefficient there, the lead coefficient of our function. So in this, but so in f of x, we've got an amplitude of one, and in the the uh, g of x, which is one third the cosine of x, well our amplitude is one third, and we can see that it is uh, compressed relative here to the x-axis and that's roughly one-third between this trough here I mean excuse me our maximum value to the x-axis the x-axis is serving as our midline we'll see that if we got a vertical translation uh, that that will change where the midline is we'll see that a little bit later on all right well let's look at another and here we've got the sine of x, f of x equals the sine of x. And again, our amplitude is just one. If I go to this maximum value here, come across here, I see that it's at positive one. Uh, and down here at the bottom, it's at negative one. Uh, the absolute value between those two is two. I divide that by two, I got an amplitude of one. And then we've got g of x equals 5 times the sine of x. And my lead coefficient here is 5. And that's what's affecting my amplitude. And I can see that it goes from positive 5 up here to negative 5 down here. That's the total between the maximum and the minimum. Divide that by 2. Well, it's 5. And so my lead coefficient, once again, determines that. Now, we're going to go over and graph a couple of these um, where we've got vertical dilations and sinusoidal functions just so to make sure that we know how to graph them on the calculator. I'm assuming you probably already do, but hey, let's test it out. All right, well, as you can see, we're going to graph the cosine of x, and then we're going to come back in and graph g of x where it's two times the cosine of x. Now, we should already know that my amplitude is going to be two because that lead coefficient of uh, two times the cosine of x. But here we are at y equal. Let's first put in the cosine of x. And close my parentheses. Now, if I want to view this, well, one thing I want to do first before I actually look at this, I want to see what kind of mode I'm in. And I'm in radian mode, and that would actually affect the way my graph is. We'll look at the window settings here in just a moment. So I, if I want to look at this, I'm going to hit Zoom, and I'm going to choose Option 7, Trig. And that'll make some adjustments in my window setting. And you can see here that we, if I'm right here on the x-axis when x is equal to 0, um, 
y is equal to 1. And that's the value of the cosine there lying on the x-axis. Now let's go look at our window settings and see what we got here. Uh, and when I did that in radians, it's actually adjusted my window settings where I've got a scale of 1.57. Well, if you think about um, pi being 3.14, well, half of that, pi over 2, is 1.57. And then we've got a scale of 8.6. Let's excuse me. Well, let's say well, x max of 8.6. Well, think about 2 pi. 3.14 times 2. Uh, 2 pi is going to be what? Uh, 6 something. And this, so this will give us at least one complete period. So let's go look at the graph here. So each tick mark here, like say right where I'm, if you can see my cursor flashing back and forth, that's pi over 2, here is pi, here's 3 pi over 2, and here's 2 pi. And as we're going to talk about period in a little bit, I can see that the period here is 2 pi. So let's go in here and graph in the, the uh, 2 times the cosine of x. And again, this is going to affect our amplitude. It's going to give us a vertical dilation, 2 times the cosine of x. And this is going to appear in red. Again, I'm going to hit my zoom 7 just out of habit. I really didn't have to. It's already set that way. So there's the cosine of x coming through. And then there's 2 times the cosine of x. And we can see that it affects our period. My midline in this case is still just the x-axis. And my amplitude is 2 units above and 2 units below. And so we consider that an amplitude. The total between the max and the minimum is actually four units. One, two, three, four. I divide that by two. And shazam, there is my vertical dilation as evidenced by the lead coefficient of that function. And we're going to continue on a little bit later and look at more transformations of sinusoidal functions.